Hi everyone, Dan Gunner with Pinsane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting and security program. And today we're going to jump into part two of getting started with Sysmon. And specifically what we're going to look at is how to build more advanced Sysmon rules. Um, and for this, we're actually going to look at Fancy Bear TTPs and tools. So today the talk's um, called Getting Fancy Bear with Sysmon. So let's hop right in. So quick overview, what Sysmon rules are is these are a, a filtering mechanism to control what is or isn't logged with Sysmon. And it's because when we're looking at Sysmon events, some of them can be quite loud. I mean, consider network connections, right? If you were to do network connection logging unfiltered on a system that communicates with the internet a lot, or if you know users are browsing a lot, you could quickly fill your Windows event logs that were honestly just flood yourself with a lot of useless alerts. So in this case, what a Sysmon rule could do is say, hey, okay, I care about network filtering, but I only care about network filtering for, you know, for these processes and not for this application. It gives you the ability to filter down to a more granular level to get rid of some noise when you're using Sysmon. Um, it can be applied to different parts of Sysmon events um, and the different types of Sysmon logs. And so if you're curious what the Sysmon log types are, definitely check out our talk from last week. We jumped into the different types of Sysmon events, um, but Sysmon rules for the large part apply to most of those events that you see throughout um, Sysmon. An example, just pulling one from last week that we did right, was um, this network connection event. And if you look at this, you know we're setting a rule for the image field. And so in this case, we're doing the rule group tied to network connect, our rule group is an or. So again, you see that group relation there. In the rule schema, the XML schema, um, you can create groups of rules and you can apply and and or relationships to these. So in this, in this what you see is rule group with the group um, rela relation of or. And on this, any of the rules inside that rule group are going to get ordered together, we'll see at the end. Um, but what we see here is the network connect on match, we're going to exclude these. Um, so when this rule gets matched, these events won't be logged actually in there. Um, specifically, the image is the field that we're going in there. So if you look on the right there, image is one of the fields inside of the network connection class of rules in there. And we're saying specifically in that image field, let me look for conditions ends with, we'll talk about conditions on the next slide. And we're saying Firefox or iExplore.exe. So in this case, we're taking the network events and we're saying, you know, if any of these match, get rid of it. Um, and we're saying on image condition with Firefox or iExplore at the end. What this is going to do is this is going to take out all of the events that are that end with Firefox or iExplorer, it's going to exclude them out of the log. So again, this is a very simple, very basic kind of starting point um, before we get a little fancier. So we talked about some of the conditions there and by default, it's going to do the is condition, but you know we can do is any and we can give it lists, we can look for substrings in there, we can look for contains any is going to again do lists in there, contains all. Um, you have excludes, you have begins with, we saw ends with in our last example. Um, you can do less than, more than. Important note on there is that it's a alphabetically compared. So if you give it two numbers, um, it may or may not work the way you expect it to work. Um, and yeah, so you have a lot of opportunities for rule logic when you hop into it that can be applied to those fields. And again, hopping back one here, we saw that image and you see condition ends with. Those fields that we talked about in that last table, you're going to use those um, logic parameters inside of that condition field there. So that's a quick overview. Again, if rules don't make sense or if you're still kind of wondering what Sysmon is, check out our video from last week and then come back in and rewatch this one. Um, so starting out, let's hop right into Fancy Bear uh, malware and again chopsticks. So it was a modular malware framework dated back to at least 2007 um, We pulled a lot of this information from the Mandiant report you see at the bottom you see the APT 28 report um, From FireEye and you know out of this report we pulled a few different features of the chopstick malware 
Mainly, okay, it's going to encrypt and store data in the registry. Well, registry modification does have sysmon events, so let's pull that in. You have C2, right? So again, we have SMM, SMTP and HTTP. Um, we have hidden files that are being created in predictable directories. Again, this is something we could look for. And then again, we have some more um, behavior to look for. So if we wanted to create a sysmon rule to look for this, um, this is a more, obviously a little more to this rule than what we had in our first example. But what you can see there is in that network connect group, now we have those ports, right? So it mentioned HTTP, it mentioned HTTPS, it mentioned SMTP. So we went ahead and filtered on those ports. So now it's an order relationship on match include. And so for our events there, we're going to match and include all of these. Um, you know, another thing, um, creating that hidden file. So again, where we see that, um, you'll see that at the bottom, the file create unmatch include. When you see that target file name in there, again, we are looking for file names with that specific target file name. Um, again, if they change the target file name, you have to watch it. Um, and then finally in that middle block there, what you can see is, um, or actually there we have the dangerous arrow that you see there. With the network connect, we have onmatch exclude to pull out Firefox, High Explorer, and MS Edge. Why I said this is dangerous is that if you have a lot of noise, this might be tempting to go ahead and add this rule. Well, this is dangerous if the attacker either hijacks the process that's actually being used, or if they know that you're excluding this and they decide to call their malware one of these process names. Um, you're going to not see events on that because you filtered it, filtered it out. Um, and finally, we have our registry event in the middle there. Um, that encryption and storing configuration data in registry, um, we can use the registry event um, modifier there, and we can say, okay, when you see that specific registry key being written, um, you know, go ahead and tell me. If you want to get fancier, depending on what the registry key is and how often that registry key is written to, you can actually write rules that are more, you know, behaviorally attuned, right? Hey, I know this process generally writes to this registry hive, right? If you know what processes should deal with a given registry hive, then it might be easier to say, okay, well, let me just make sure that processes and applications that I expect to write here, write here. Um, that being said, on the flip side, if you have a registry key, which a lot of different applications write to, you might have to be creative in other ways in how you're building these rules. Um, but what this showed on this slide is we took just a few of those very specific behaviors from Mandian's Chopstick report, um, and we wrote kind of just a very quick set of rules around that. So if we wanted to go ahead and reload that, again, you can reload this into an active sysmon agent with the taxi and the file name flag. And what you'll see on the left there is it'll say, okay, file validated, this is legitimate, um, configuration updated. If you then do the sysmon taxi, you can see, okay, yeah, our rules did take. And in the bottom of the screen there, you see the rule configuration um, of those rules actually loaded in. So again, this is validation that yes, the rules that we did write were of valid specification um, and this is how we reload it. So in other ways, um, if we wanted to look for persistence again, used by Fancy Bear. Um, so also back, back a while back with Office, there was this really interesting way of um, using Microsoft Office registry keys for persistence. This worked with Office 2007, 2010, 2013. Um, and interestingly enough, um, on the Hexacorn blog at the bottom, really interesting write up on this. Um, you know, even when Internet Explorer launches, it actually caused um, some of these keys to actually register. And um, so execution was actually gained through this. So, what you would want to look for on this again is registry key values changing here. Um, what was interesting with this is this Hexacorn blog was actually written, I think, a year, so about a year before um, Fancy Bear started using this. Um, so again, for kind of incentive to be proactive, we can take things like this and say, hey, you know, maybe before it was known that Fancy Bear used this, this techniques works, we can say, okay, well, let's look for this 
technique, let's look for kind of this shortcut to load arbitrary code or to have arbitrary code run, um, you know, in this case, when in Internet Explorer starts. So, you know, writing this rule, it's as simple as just adding those two registry keys or knowing what registry keys you're trying to monitor. So thanks for tuning in this week. What we wanted to do was just cover kind of a basic um, a basic rule and then go through some of the more advanced rules. Um, again, it's a really powerful tool and hopefully you learned something today and please reach out if you have any questions and we hope to see you back next week. Thanks a lot.